Uh, good morning. Welcome to Straight Talk. Um, today, we are joined by Mr. John Carry Ong, Executive Vice President at Union Bank. Good morning, John. Good morning, yeah. Good morning, Trina. And Trina, as well. One of the editors here. Um, John, welcome to the show. As, Thank you. Uh, sir, tell us something about what's latest on Union Bank. Okay. Yeah. So, I handle the transaction banking in Union Bank. Mm -hmm. And um, I can honestly tell you that it's never been more exciting mm -hmm. um, to be working in transaction banking, um, especially with the, with the Union Bank now, because there's a lot of new things that are happening. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure you know that fintech has been a trend lately, and that has also spurred the, the amount of innovation that's happening um, in my business, uh, particularly for, for corporate cash management. Um, so, for instance, in the past year alone, we've come up with a lot of exciting new products, um, one of which is the portal. So, the portal is our um, platform for corporates now, for, for their online banking needs. And um, you know, if you look back years ago, the trend in the industry, it was um, essentially for different types of uh, products, com uh, banks would come up with different systems. So the corporate treasurer, the, the finance guys, they would have to log in and access many different systems um, in order to get the job done. Um, what we've done with the portal is we've consolidated all the requirements, all the needs into one single sign-on, whether it's um, different products or whether it's different organizations. No? We also recognize that a lot of our customers, they're, uh, the finance people, they handle not just one company, they handle multiple companies. And what a hassle it would be if they had to log off, log on, log off, log on, every time they, they had to switch uh, to a different organization. Mm -hmm. So what we've done is we've consolidated all of that. So using one, one login, one password, um, they can easily switch organizations within our system. So in, in um, organization one, the role could be a maker. In organization two, the role could be an authorizer for specific products. No? So it's one uh, exciting new innovation. And of course, we've completely revamped the UX UI, the feel of our corporate banking site. Um, typically, when you think about corporate banking, it looks very technical and boring. Here, we've really updated it so that even it feels like a, a consumer you know, uh, app as well. Mm -hmm. It's very intuitive. You know what to do, etc. So that's one of the recent solutions that uh, we've, we've come up with. And, and we have uh, a number of others. No? Mm -hmm. Can you see that the portal um, already um, integrates <coughs> a lot of the different functions? Can you explain more about that? Sure. So, for instance, um, the, the most basic function you would require is to view your account balances. Um, then you can look at your transaction details, you can download uh, your bank statements, etc. Um, but on top of that, for instance, we've been actively pushing for electronic payments. So using the portal, you can actually pay your supplier, you can pay your uh, employees, you can do a fund transfer, you can move money online using either Pesonet or Instapay for, for peso transfers. For dollar transfers, you can use what we call PDDTS and SWIFT. Um, so all these are actually available for our co corporate customers online. Uh, so at the click of a button, they can do a, a, a transfer. So um, we also have a supply chain uh, module within the portal. It's a financial supply chain. And um, this, this financial supply chain solution, we actually co-developed this with uh, IBM. IBM are the experts in um, Hyperledger blockchain. Okay. So we, we got them to do the back end. Um, you know, they're the domain experts in terms of Hyperledger, but Union Bank is a domain expert in terms of supply chain solutions and, and uh, electronic invoicing. So we did all the front end user stories, etc. And we just rolled this out a couple of months ago. We've onboarded some pilot customers, and so far it's been looking uh, quite promising. Now, what's the advantage of a supply chain solution? 
supply chain solution usually, uh, typically involves an anchor client, um, a large corporate who can either be um, buying or selling. No? So you could onboard their, their customers, their dealers and distributors. We could also onboard their suppliers. The advantage to their suppliers and their dealers is that they can actually access financing. Um, they can access financing online. They can do it electronically without having to sign a promissory note, without having to submit uh, documents, uh, assuming they've been onboarded. And they can access the financing um, much cheaper than they would if they went and got a credit line on their own. So the, the whole concept of financial supply chain is that they leverage on the credit quality of the principal, the anchor client, um, and on that basis, they can also get access to credit. So that's another exciting new uh, feature we have on on our on the portal. What has been the response so far from those uh, companies that you rolled this out with? Yeah, so the response has been quite positive. In fact, um, we are currently trying to onboard a lot more because uh, there's been a lot of interest. Um, companies also see the value of uh, supply chain uh, financing because it helps their their distributors, it helps their dealers, um, which in turn helps them. Uh, it also helps their suppliers, um, which makes their um, sort of supply chain and procurement process uh, more effective, more cost effective. No? So the response has been uh, quite positive. And, and as mentioned, it benefits not only the, our, the, the anchor client, it also benefits the suppliers and the dealers who are, a lot of them are SMEs. Yeah, as we're having said that, you know, you have this program, retail financing program, right? Yes, yeah. Um, this has been the concerted effort among, you know, yes, uh, so everybody in the industry. So, Correct. So let, let me explain what okay. uh, retailer financing is about. So, so I mentioned earlier the, the anchor clients who could sell to distributors. No? But what we're talking about for retail financing is going even downstream from the distributors down to the retailers. And when I say retailers, it's not just the large retailers, not the key accounts. No? I'm talking about the small size size stores. So this program we did uh, in partnership with True Money. So they are our, our partners for this. And um, what we've done is we've uh, approached certain distributors who were referred to us by uh, some of the FMCGs out there and on the, the big names in FMCG, they would uh, refer to us their distributors and then their distributors would then um, endorse the program. And what happens is um, there's a true money agent that goes with the distributor to try to onboard the size size store. Um, and once onboarded, we'll give them a small line of credit so that they can then purchase more goods from that particular distributor. Okay. Um, and that will allow them to stock up more and sell more. Um, and, and you know, the, the, the whole point of this is also um, financial education for the size size stores. A lot of them, when, when they hear about um, loans or credit, um, they're very apprehensive. They think it's high interest, uh, etc. cetera. No? But actually, you can use um, credit to your advantage. You can use it to buy more and sell more. Mm -hmm. And from the income, you could pay the interest uh, quite easily. Yeah. So, so that's sort of the program. No? We give a small line of credit, a few thousand pesos, so that they can then purchase more goods from the distributor, um, which means that they don't need to close their shop mm -hmm. in the middle of the week, go to a larger retailer, buy goods, and then have to transport it back. <laughs> They can just uh, stay in their shop and, and essentially sell more. Yeah. And um, the early signs have been quite positive. Um, for those stores who embraced the use of uh, this program, we've seen up to sales increase up to seven times, sevenfold. Um, so that has been quite positive. And um, for us, for the bank, it is also a way for us to learn because, uh, as you know, when you talk about Sari Sari stores, they wouldn't have the typical um, financing um, account statements. They wouldn't have um, an income statement or a balance sheet. No, they, they won't have any of that. So they, tradition, um, they won't have access to traditional forms of credit. So what we're trying to do is also learn from this experience 
to come up with new credit scoring algorithms, okay. which can then help us to extend credit to other types of uh, institutions, uh, micro institutions in the future. What are these, you know, what are these ways to determine your credit scores? For? Um, for instance, now the alternative uh, ways that we would uh, explore is how long have they been buying mm -hmm. from a particular distributor? Um, if they're buying from multiple distributors, again, that's another uh, that's another uh, data point that we can use. Mm -hmm. um, how long have they been operating in that area? Um, uh, and so on and so forth. Now, even demographics, even even gender, age, etc. Um, all these come into play here because at the end we need as much data as we can um, and on the basis of the data we can then come up with uh, some sort of algorithm. Okay. So to, to answer your question, we don't know okay. what the actual data points are or what to look at, but what we're trying to do is to learn from it. Yeah. So Maybe cell phone data. Cell phone data <laughs> as well, um, you know, if, if uh, they provide their cell phone number, if we know it's uh, prepaid or postpaid, um, those would also be uh, valuable data. Okay. Yeah. So where is the data coming from right now? Oh, so the data um, uh, would come from the retailer themselves as we onboard them, but it's also filtered by the distributor. So we would rely on the distributor to guide us and say, you know what, these stores have been operational and buying from us for more than six months, uh, they're regular uh, customers, and um, we know them essentially. So on the basis of um, the endorsement of the distributor, we will get whatever data that they have and, and you know, on that basis try to come up with uh, a scoring model. To understand this better, um, does, does the distributor have a hand at uh, determining that this particular retailer can be a candidate for this program or do you are you the ones who are reaching out to the retailers themselves? Oh, we do it hand in hand with the distributor uh -huh. because they would know the Sari Sari stores best. So it's upon their endorsement. So we would shadow the distributors. Uh, so, um, a true money agent would shadow the distributor, and then um, cross sell and offer the, this this product. How has been the reach so far? Like how many? Would you know the number of how many um, sari sari stores or retailers um, we have? We've onboarded um, around three thousand, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, uh, so it's okay. still early days. There's still a lot more to 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 grow. No? But the trick there is to get them to actually use it. Okay. So it doesn't mean that if they've signed up, that they'll actually avail of it. Eh? Mm -hmm. um, so the availment rate is still quite low. And that's part of our you know, that's part of our learning in our program. We need to constantly educate them. Okay. We need to constantly remind them that, hey, um, there's this uh, line of credit that you can actually use. Yes, sir. Yeah. The trick there is to use it. So what do you think are the pain points for this um, people to actually, you know, yeah, taking the that line of credit. Correct, um, and then that's a very good question, though, because um, even before our partnership with True Money, we also ran experiments with a large uh, FMCG, where we built our own solution, we built an app, uh, we generated a, a card with QR codes that they can use um, uh, to avail of the line. No? And what we've really learned is that um, if you just give them a line of credit and their mindset is, I'm borrowing, uh, I'm, I'm incurring debt, um, <coughs> there's that apprehension. Some of them, when, you, when, when they find out that it's a line of credit, na, na siya, utang siya, immediately they say no. So it really is trying to open up their minds to the idea that um, sometimes you need you need to borrow. You need to use credit if you want to grow, and if you want to come out, um, you know, uh, out of um, your your social status and probably earn more. Sometimes you have to take that risk. The other thing that we we found out um, the smaller stores are more receptive. The bigger sari sari stores who are more established are not as receptive as well to availing of the the line of credit. Um, but there are certain sort of um, demographics that we've seen where it works more for them and not for the others. Why do you think that this is happening? Mm. The, the, the smaller ones are the ones who are more receptive? Um, probably because the smaller ones, um, they're also being manned by the owners. 
and um, since they're they're the ultimate decision maker, they can take a call right then and there. Mm -hmm. Sometimes in bigger ones, uh, it's manned uh, sometimes by employees um, or maybe relatives, not the owners themselves. So, um, pag hindi mo na champa na yung owner ang kausap mo, then they might not agree enough with the meeting. And actually, one of the problems is, ano, diba? parang we Filipinos are we're more used to um, borrowing from informal, you know, exactly, five exactly. six money lending. Correct. Do you correct. think this is an indication of a bigger problem? Um, hindi naman. You know, um, the the five six as we call it, um, they are there for a reason, mm -hmm. because no one else wants to lend to that segment. Mm -hmm. If the banks start thinking differently. And saying, how can I come up with a, uh, a credit scoring model where which allows me to lend to that sector? Then maybe they don't need to rely on the, the five six. Five six. Yeah. So they're there for a reason because the banks are not fulfilling that particular need. So, and and that's where I say, you know, with the fintechs coming in, they've really shook things up, um, and and um, made us think differently. So that banks now are willing to experiment mm -hmm. and try these uh, types of lending um, and hopefully uplift the lives of these Filipinos. No? Mm -hmm. uh, ultimately, that's that's our goal. Right. Um, so um, we'll just take a short break and then when we come back, we'll discuss more about um, the new transaction products of Union Bank. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we're back, and we're here. We're joined by Comfy Manalo, also one of our um, um, editors and the uh, head of ad advertising. So uh, to continue the discussion, yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, sorry for uh, for um, joining you late. <laughs> no worries. Anyways, um, just to be clear, when you when you when you uh, talk of distributors, you are talking of um, distributors of retail products, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And how can uh, this uh, the uh, uh, sorry, sorry, sir. How can they avail of this uh, financial facilities? Is this is this through through money or directly to to Union Bank? Ah, okay, good question. No? So um, it is through our partner, True Money. Mm -hmm. So our partner will onboard the distributor. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll provide them with a POS, a mobile POS, which works in two G. Mm -hmm. That's another learning that we had. No, um, when we first started our own program. We built an app, and of course, the app you need a smartphone, mm -hmm. and the smartphone needs LTE. Mm -hmm. When you go around um, the, the sari sari stores, you will find that walang signal. Mm -hmm. So, kung walang signal, hindi ka makatransak. Mm -hmm. So, one of the advantages um, of uh, True Money's uh, partnership now is they provide this uh, device which mm -hmm. works on 2G. So mm -hmm. it's very light. It has to be very light. Mm -hmm. um, so they they provide the POS to the distributor. Mm -hmm. And ang gagawin nila, ilalagay lang yung uh, code mm -hmm. and then may, may, may OTP na papadala mm -hmm. sa, sa, sa phone nung ano, ilalagay nila doon. Then they can avail of the 
the line of credit. So the processing of the uh, the credit facility is online then. It is. It's digital. Mm -hmm. And guess what? The distributor gets mm -hmm. paid immediately. Yeah, just after pag, the pag process. process na, oh, pag na process na, <coughs> nalagay na yung OTP na na approve na. What we do is the the wallet of the the distributor is already credited. Mm -hmm. So that's another advantage. They don't need to be carrying around cash. Cash. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Oh. But siyempre, at some point in time, mm -hmm. may cash pa rin yan. Kasi they have, they'll need to pay back uh, the mm -hmm. loan upon the next delivery. Then they'll need to pay the cash at, mm -hmm. at that point. So it sort of minimizes the bit, pero it's still there. But ultimately, our goal is this. In the beginning, yung, um, there are agents from True Money who are going mm -hmm. around and collecting the cash. Um, but what we want is eventually, the Sari Sari store will just go to a True Money center, mm -hmm. a True Money agent, and doon sila mag-cash in. So, over time, we will try to change the behavior kasi, can, to make it sustainable. Can you also, can you, why can't you provide the Sari Sari store or the borrowers uh, their own wallet so they can pay the, their, their credit? Precisely. And, and that is actually the goal. Eventually, hopefully, they will also get paid through their mm -hmm. wallet. Mm -hmm. So, if kung ako, punta ko ng neighborhood Sari Sari store, I need to buy some ketchup or whatever, if I can pay them digitally, perfect. Mm -hmm. which is part of what the BSP is trying yeah, to do. Yeah, yeah, exactly. If if you um, recall, no, um, recently, they launched yung QR PH, yeah. the QR standards uh, for, for the <coughs> Philippines. And the BSP governor, si Mr. Jokno, actually made a public uh, call for the banks to try as much as possible to waive the fees for micropayments. Mm -hmm. He mentioned that um, during the launch of the, uh, the QR payments, so the banks, in response, we will uh, we are currently trying to look at how do we enable micropayments digitally via QR, and then how do we uh, eliminate the fees? How far are you that in that area in, actually, in providing that that uh, service to the Sari Sari store? Yes, um, actually, I would say we're not that far away. Mm -hmm. Um, there are institutions who have been onboarding Sari Sari stores. Um, mm -hmm. If not the banks, the EMIs, mm, yeah. the, the likes of uh, Paymaya, Paymaya Gcash, etc. Et et that day, when you have a Paymaya uh, onboarded and you have a Paymaya wallet, mm -hmm. it's a closed loop. The whole point of the BSP, NRPS, the National Retail Payment System, was to make everything interoperable. Mm -hmm. So, bawal na ngayon, closed loop. So, kung na-onboard na ni Paymaya, na-onboard na ni Gcash mm -hmm. yung Sari Sari store, nandiyan na yung QR nila, mm -hmm. even if I have a union bank account, mm -hmm. I can do a scan to pay. Mm -hmm. I can do a payment via Instapay uh, and pay that uh, merchant. So, it's actually happening as we speak. Yeah, yes. I, 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 actually, I'm, I'm doing that in some of my transactions, kung available. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. you go, you, at the restaurant, you pay. Correct. Using QR eh, dati kasi, since closed loop siya, medyo limited. Mm -hmm. Each um, each institution on their own initiative tries to onboard as much merchants as possible. Mm. Ngayon, basta mo onboard siya once, you don't need to onboard them again. Redundant na yun. Mm -hmm, yeah. So pag na onboard na ni Gcash or Paymaya, we don't need to. We can focus on the others which have not been onboarded. Um, yeah, so, because if if those Sari Sari stores are onboarded with that and they have their own QR code, madali na yung it will now be ano, uh, the realization of the um, the ultimate goal of the B BSP that when you buy a toyo or a suka or a ice cream sa sarbitero, you can use QR code exactly uh, yeah. micro payments mm -hmm. and ang gusto nga nila libre mm -hmm. and that is what the industry is sort of gearing towards mm -hmm. um, if uh, as you know uh, our chairman our union bank chairman uh, Tito Ortiz yeah. is also the chairman of the FBA. Philippine Philippine Payments Management Inc. Okay. And we were sort of crafting the rules on how to enable um, waiving the fees for micropayments. Mm -hmm. So um, in, in a matter of uh, a couple of months, you will come up with, you will hear more, uh, more stuff about uh, enabling micropayments. Actually, uh, there, are, there are lots of institutions now who are, uh, who are uh, in, into that direction. Exactly, okay, exactly, and um, we're, we're also one of them. We're mm. really supporting the, the government's initiative to, to digitize payments. How, how about the Isari Sires, or how much, how much can they borrow from that, facility, uh, from that uh, credit okay. facility? So for one, for a Sari Sari store, relatively small size, from one particular distributor, mm -hmm. um, 
around 2,000 mm. minimum, which can be increased. If you aggregate across multiple products, mm -hmm. multiple distributors, mm -hmm. then it can reach 10,000, 20,000, mm -hmm. uh, depending on uh, the, the size and the requirements. No? So it's actually also bringing them into the uh, the banking system. Yeah, you give them their you know, their um, digital put footprint, so they'll, they'll yes. be included correct, in correct. the uh, financial system. Now we only have one other problem. Mm -hmm. How do we provide the LTE uh, <laughs> on on those areas no? yeah. So, yeah. but the government is, is you know they have initiatives to work on it but um, hopefully side by side in parallel things are happening yeah so working with the government um, we also have a, a discussion topic here on um, your partnership with the BIR in terms of um, online payment of taxes can yes. you tell us more about yes. that so um, Union Bank we are the only private bank mm -hmm. who is connected directly to the BIR yeah. for e-payments. Mm -hmm. Why do I say only private bank? Because the only other banks connected today are Land Bank and DBP. Mm -hmm. So kami yung sole private bank that's connected. And um, it's it's uh, it provides our customers with a huge advantage. Mm -hmm. now, I was telling Trina and Vernon earlier, uh, a few years back when I had to do my tax filing mm -hmm. and tax payments, I had to spend half a day. Yes. Um, from Ortigas, I had to go to Mahati. Kasi my RTO was in Mahati. So yun, limited ka na sa, sa geography mo, no? kung saan mm -hmm. ka pwede magbayad over the counter. I went to Mahati. Mm -hmm. Of course, it took me an hour and a half had to find parking. Went to a bank branch, uh, which is not Union Bank. Mm -hmm. Siyempre, yun, kung makita ng tellers yung pinafile kong uh, income tax return ko, di ba? Mm -hmm. that's, and hence, that's another issue, data privacy. Mm -hmm. Every time you do something over the counter, multiple people are seeing your, your transaction data, yeah. they're not just seeing how much taxes you're paying they're seeing your the, your whole tax return magkano bang kinita mo magkano etc and addresses <laughs> exactly and um you know and then the whole that whole experience i queued up uh, mm -hmm. the teller pumila ko after mga 15 20 minutes nung turn ko na yung binigay ko sabi ay mali mm -hmm. you need to go to uh, another counter so i had to go out from my queue go somewhere else, mm -hmm. and then binigay ko yung forms, tapos binigyan ako ng, ng uh, more forms to fill out mm -hmm. in triplicate or quadruplicate, I forgot na. So I had to fill them up three, four times. And after that, I had to go back to the teller. Pila mm -hmm. na naman ako. Nung kumila na ako sa teller, nagbayad na ako, sabi, sa, sabi ng teller sa akin, sabi ko, tapos na ba? Hindi, bumalik ka na naman doon mm -hmm. sa kabilang counter. So all in all, to pay taxes, to mm -hmm. do my civic duty, it was a painful experience. Yes. <laughs> so, which is why we were very, um, we were very happy when we were able to do uh, to launch the BIRE payments. Mm -hmm. So today, our customers, whether individuals or corporates, individuals through Union Bank Online, mm -hmm. where we have the app, corporates through the portal, where we have online and also the app, within a minute, mm -hmm. you can do a BIR tax payment. You just mm -hmm. fill in five, six fields. Your TIN number, you put in the amount, etc. You send it, you, you put in the tax form, uh, form number, you submit it, and that's it. No need to submit the forms, etc. No. So, um, for me, it's it's uh, it's a game changer, and and for me, it, it's also very encouraging to see that the government is also trying to provide these services mm -hmm. to the public. So, our role is to try to encourage and educate our customers that there are these solutions out there and they have to use it but this is uh, available o or offered only to union bank uh, yes yes mm -hmm. now um i'm glad you asked account that holders. correct so yes for union bank account holders you can do it via union bank online mm -hmm. or through the portal um but the industry is also headed towards interoperability and then mm -hmm. um, this is the other thing that uh, we're working on it's P2G mm -hmm. uh, for, for payments to government uh, person to government payments such as tax payments um, I sit in the steering committee of PESANET mm -hmm. in fact I'm the chairman of the steering committee and one of our more recent projects is to enable uh, P2G payments via mm -hmm. PESANET so how does that work you you can actually um, go to Land Bank's LinkBiz portal mm -hmm. 
you can put in what you're trying to pay, the same information that you would put on, in Linear Bank Online, um, your TIN number, the form number, etc. And then if you click on Pesonet and you select your bank, it will route you. Mm -hmm. It will route the transaction <coughs> to your bank. And then from your bank, you can then authorize the payment. Mm -hmm. And it will then send it via Pesonet to Land Bank. Um, so we just started this pilot um, a couple of months ago. Um, mm. Now what we're trying to do is onboard more and more banks so that we can enable the P2G. We're also mm. trying to onboard more and more government uh, entities and institutions. Mm -hmm. So what I heard was DTI is now part of LinkBiz mm -hmm. um, and uh, a lot of LGUs. No? There are like eight or nine different LGUs. But the goal eventually is that um, using Pesonet, you can actually do all these government payments online as well. What timeline are you looking at? Ah, um, so it's it's already live. Um, so to expand it, um, so seguro by by next year, by, by mid next year, I would probably see more vendors and more banks and more payments. Yes, yes, yes. Sometimes you don't expect it. Eh? Like when we when we first started Pesonet and Instapay, mm -hmm. um, the volumes were low. But if you look at the volumes today, they're actually quite big. Mm -hmm. um, for Pesonet, um, for the industry as a whole, every month we're doing 1.1, 1.2 million transactions. Mm -hmm. And we're doing probably 120 billion uh, in terms of value uh, mm -hmm. in, in Pesonet. In Instapay, the, the numbers are even more. I think per month we're looking at around three to four million transactions a month, um, especially with the millennials. Mm -hmm. They're they're quite adaptive to technology. Yeah, which brings me to question. Uh, this, but uh, in the Philippines, uh, cash is still king. Most of For the now, yeah, most of the transactions. Pero, mm -hmm. you saw the latest survey mm -hmm. that came out by um, the Better Than Cash Alliance. Mm -hmm. It was also announced by the BSP mm -hmm. uh, governor two weeks ago. When the study was first commissioned way back in 2013, the amount of digital payments versus cash mm -hmm. it was 1% digital, 99% cash. Mm -hmm. Today, guess where we are? What? 10%. 10%. 10%. Mm -hmm. I mean, so in a span of, say, um, seven years? Five, uh, six, five, six yeah, years, yeah, yes. Six and and, and the, the 10% was as of 2018. Mm -hmm. uh, and you, you have to see that from 2018 up to now, the mm -hmm. growth tra trajectory no? And wala pa tayong mga payments to merchants, wala pa tayong mga QR code. Yeah. So, I think we're sort of headed in that direction. Yeah. Um, but you're right, eh? we still have a long way to go. Yeah, pero, yeah, you, you, the, you know, the growth is really you know, very, very staggering. If you can see the idea, the, the digitalization of, of e-commerce has also brought the the development of other industries. Uh, like absolutely, logistics. Logistics, exactly. Logistics is, is, uh, oh. You know, that's why we're seeing uh, uh, Lazad, uh, you know, deliver them. Yeah, and, and lahat ng sale, that na dati, narinig mo lang sa China, mm -hmm. kung ano yung mga sale dates nila, meron na rin dito. And, mm -hmm. and people look They're the ones benefit, benefiting from this e-commerce. Correct. Uh, yeah. um, absolutely. But mm -hmm. all of us, mm -hmm. as consumers, yeah. all of us as citizens, we are ultimately benefiting from mm -hmm. uh, digital payments. Um, the goal originally was 20%. By 2020, mm -hmm. that was the original goal by set by the late governor, ah, Esting yeah. Espinilla. Mm -hmm. um, Do you think we can reach that goal? I think there there is a possibility. Mm -hmm. um, I think we're probably more than 10 percent today. Because mm -hmm. again, the study was as of 2018, 2018 yeah. um, and maybe by end of 2020, we mm -hmm. could be close to the 20 percent mark. Yeah, um, sure. But compared to countries like Korea or even China. Yeah. Um, pa nila. Mm. So we have to do more. And that's part of our advocacy in Union Bank. Um, if, if you've noticed, sometimes when we, when we, when we go out and we talk, no, um, it's not just for our benefit. Eh. It's really to take up the Philippines. Mm -hmm. um, case in point is that um, we recently uh, came from the Singapore FinTech Festival. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, Union Bank was um, front and center. In mm -hmm. fact, the Prime Minister of Singapore, he went to like four or five different booths. Mm -hmm. now, no? He chose to go to Union Bank as one of them. No? Uh, because, you know, um, and that's, that's part of what we want. We want to make noise. We want to show that Filipinos are actually world class. Mm -hmm. um, we can build great products. 
um, we can really tech up the industry. We have a lot of programmers, mm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, we may not be the best in reading comprehension as per the latest survey. Yeah. <laughs> but when you talk about IT yeah. and programming skills, you know, I, I believe... Yeah, you have your own school. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Right? Oh, so, you know, so um, and, and part of the reason is, is uh, for us, no? We cannot just tech up ourselves. Mm-hmm. We cannot tech up in isolation. Because... W- walang ibig sabihin yun. Mm. Kailangan, sabay-sabay tayo. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, we'll have all these products, we'll have these APIs, pero sinong gagamit nun? Mm-hmm. Wala, di ba? So, our advocacy really is take up everyone uh, in the Philippines. Yeah, one of the challenges of <coughs> uh, in taking the Philippines, is, yes. aside from tech and aside from trust issues, is yung natural laziness ng mga Filipinos. In fact, there are uh, people like you who are who are supposed to be uh advocate of of digital payment or digital transactions are not actually using their own product because mm. like magbabayad na lang ng bills they can they can use their cell phone to do that but they they ask their their maids or their yaya no punta ka ng bayad sa bayad mo doon mm. so how would you react to that that and i heard that from ano from from a president of a very large fintech company yes oh I was also doing business with you. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I, I hear what you're saying. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the behavior changes will not happen overnight. Mm-hmm. People are so used to certain things. Mm-hmm. Um, na for them, it's easier nga, as you say, utusan mm-hmm. ko na lang yung maid or driver or whatever. Um, but I think also times are changing. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and people are sort of adapt, adapting to it na rin. Mm-hmm. Uh, So for instance, when you do that, when you know, they have to realize that all that data, kita nung messenger, kita ng mm-hmm. maid, kita ng ano, di ba? Um, so, for, for me, um, I think over time, they will realize that doing it themselves, doing it within 30 seconds mm-hmm. on their mobile app is much, much more convenient. Now, what do we need to do? And this is this I firmly believe, no? We need to really look at the customer experience. Why is it na mas mabilis na utusan ko na lang si driver or si maid? Mm. Kasi when previously when we built products, they're functional, but in terms of the user experience, mm. they suck in general, right? Mm. But once we start thinking about the customer more and and making it easy and intuitive, guess what? They will start using it. So it's also incumbent upon all of us um, in, in the industry, the banking and the tech industry, to build better products, to build great products, mm-hmm. so that even a first-time user logging in will know how to do it. Mm-hmm. So it will come. Mm-hmm. Um, so until that day, when everyone thinks about the user experience, the customer experience, you will still see, as you say, that laziness of just having your mm. your maiden driver do it. Pero ano na rin, I think um, slowly th- things are changing. Yeah. It's the product talaga. Yeah, absolutely. It's the product. Yeah. Uh, also understanding the challenges of yeah. the the consumers in correct, terms of correct. how you want to be able to address those challenges and Correct. Yeah. Which is why I mentioned earlier even for the portal. I mean, yes, there's a lot of cool features. You can do all the electronic payments on the portal. You can do multi-organization. You can customize your own approval matrix. You know, there's a lot of cool stuff. We have a mobile app. You can do everything there. But for me, the one big thing is really a, a whole new different customer experience. Um, and that's how we, you know, how we want to differentiate ourselves when we build our products. Everyone can offer Resonet. Everyone can offer a, a bills payment, diba? Right? Mm-hmm. But um, coming up with the with the right user experience for us is uh, key. Do you have anything? Sir, last uh, question. How downstream is downstream? Oh, so you can go, well, downstream of a Sari Sari store from our client is like three or four levels down now. Um, but ultimately, um, our hope is that it goes even further down. As, as, I, as we mentioned, mm-hmm. even the buyer, even the customer ng Sari Sari store, if they can do things digitally, um, that would be our goal. Mm-hmm. And if we And if we can see all of that, you know, that the chain, 
we can do financing at every step of the way. No? So um, that's that's ultimately what's, our. What's your uh, war chest in the, for the project? project? How uh, much is your war chest for that? I will not disclose. <laughs> yeah. uh, you, know, uh, you are competing but, directly with with the with the underground economy or <coughs> this five six, which is I think mm. estimated up to twenty billion pesos. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, so we're th do doing things slowly and prudently. Mm -hmm. Of course, we're not just gonna open up and mm -hmm. and uh, no no. But actually, our problem is not um, the amount. Mm -hmm. Ang problem na namin is how do we scale it faster? Mm -hmm. We've set a budget, um, and we're seeing only a small portion of it being utilized. Ang mm -hmm. gusto namin is more to onboard more. How do we mm -hmm. onboard a hundred thousand sari sari stores? Mm -hmm. How do we onboard five hundred thousand sari sari stores? How we do? Kind how do we? Yes. How do we increase yeah. the Vendors, utilization? Yeah from the current less than 1% mm -hmm. to 10% to 20% uh, and, and more no so marami pa there's still a lot more that uh, we can do but uh, maybe just to add uh, a few more things and uh, um, you mentioned kanina on financial inclusion no? mm -hmm. we also have a number of projects mm -hmm. where we're working with um, government institutions um, the latest one is with Pagibig mm -hmm. so do you know that Today, if you go to a Pag-ibig um, uh, branch, you can apply for a loyalty card, mm -hmm. a Pag-ibig loyalty card, okay, which will give you a lot of benefits, discounts, etc. But on top of that, you get a bank account. Mm -hmm. So that bank account, um, it's not a prepaid card; it's an actual bank okay. account that you can use. And with that bank account, um, you can then download Union Bank online, and you, mm -hmm. you can do all sorts of payments, uh, transfers, Instapay, mm. Pesonet, bills payment, mm. BIR, etc. So we're also trying to bank the unbanked. Mm -hmm. um, we're doing it through our partners, through Pagibig. We're doing it through SSS. We did it through GSIS many, many years ago, decades ago, um, where we were the first to introduce mm -hmm. the, the debit card uh, for, for GSIS members. No? Um, but that's also part of what we're trying to do. Work with these large government institutions who have large customer bases and try to bank the community. Um, maybe in the beginning, they won't use the account, mm -hmm. but, but you know what, over time, and, and as we head towards digitization, um, you know, they, they might realize now, oh, I'm not unbanked pala. Mm -hmm. Meron Union Bank account in my Pag-ibig card or in my SSS card, di ba? Um, so, so that's sort of another thrust that we are we are doing no? uh, in terms of um, financial inclusion. Yeah. Uh, last question. Going back to banking the unbanked. Yes. Um, in regards or with regards to that program of retail financing, uh, will you also give bank accounts to to those uh, to the borrowers? Okay. So right now it's not a requirement mm -hmm. because if you put more requirements, then the take up will be uh, yeah. slower. Mm -hmm. But for us, if they want to open an account, definitely. Um, it's so, an sa program. Um, right now, it's an it's an option. Mm -hmm. no? um, but uh, going forward, you know, um, as long as they they want it, then we can open an account for them. Mm -hmm. What we don't want is to force it upon mm -hmm. uh, upon them. Kung ayon naman nila and they just want the line of credit, then we're fine with that. Mm -hmm. uh, so, at the end of the day, kasi we believe uh, in the, the customer should have a choice. Mm -hmm. you know? Having said that, um, sorry to segue into, mm -hmm. into this other thing now. Um, even for payroll. So today, the payroll, um, when you join a company, mm -hmm. uh, like when you join Daily Tribune, they, uh, the company will tell you, oh, you open an account with this bank. Diba? There are specific mm -hmm. banks that mm -hmm. they work with. I think in the not so distant future, you can ask your employer to pay you in any bank account. Mm -hmm. That is that is our um, our vision and our hope. So if you join another company, regardless of who their corporate account is with, no, whichever mm -hmm. bank, you can say, okay, pay me through my union bank account, pay me through my Pag-ibig uh, mm -hmm. card, pay me through my SSS card uh, or UMID card that I have. Mm -hmm. no? So I think in the in the not so distant future, we will see that. Um, and and I think that's ultimately positive and, and um, beneficial for the consumer. Yeah, it's more convenient. You don't have to, to not, change exactly an convenience, but also choice. Mm -hmm. If you are not comfortable with the bank of your employer, why should you be forced? 
to open an account there. Mm-hmm. Right. You should be able to, to just, you know, in, in, in all other countries, naman, ganun, eh. you just tell them which bank account to credit it to, they'll do it uh, electronically. Yeah. So I think we're headed there. We're headed there. Okay. Well, thank you very thank much. You very thank you so much. much. Thank, thank you so much. much. And uh, thank you for having me here and more power to Daily Tribune. And hope to see you Thanks, soon. John. Hope to see more of, the, of uh, BD, uh, Union Bank next year. Yeah. <laughs> next year. Hope to see more of your products yes. uh, successful. You will. You'll launch. hear more about us, definitely. Yeah. yeah. And thank you. And thank, thank you for so being part, a part of the Daily Tribune. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Trina. Thank you, John. Thanks. And Kona.